Resafloor makes it fast and easy to model wood buildings for both gravity and lateral forces. It includes specialty wood joist products as well as the ability to set up diaphragms and design shear walls for lateral demands. So what I have here is the first elevated floor of a wood building. Let's see how we got here. I'll go to the floor plan view and I'm going to insert a new floor. Note that I could make it a copy of the floor that we're looking at, but in this case I'm going to model it from scratch. We'll do it at 24 feet, a wood deck, hit OK, and a blank floor plan opens up. One of the best ways to draw something from scratch is to use the drawing grid. So this is by default a 30 by 30 square grid that gives you some points to snap to. You can edit the increments here, make it more useful. But one of the strongest features is to instead import a DXF file. So this is using some CAD work that you've likely already done. For my example, I have this DXF file in AutoCAD. And you can see that there's going to be a lot of busy, a lot of different layer types here that we don't necessarily need for Risa floor. Everything is modeled on center lines. So really all I need is this wall center line layer and maybe this interior framing that gets me a grid of my column locations. Back in Risa floor. I want to make sure that I set my DXF units to the correct ones, otherwise I'm going to end up with a 1 12th scale model of my building. So let's change that to feet. Browse for the file. DXF is right here. And you can see I'm prompted to pick and choose which layers I want to use for my Risa floor file. So I can really uncheck all of these extraneous layer types. For this model I just need the wall center lines and maybe this interior framing layer. I can change the color to be red, match the DXF that we had before, hit done, and it brings in the outline of my building and I'm ready to trace over it and draw in some elements. Let's start with our walls. I'm gonna to go to the wall design rules spreadsheet. This is where we input the parameters that Risa Floor is going to use to do some of the wall design for us. So I start with a maximum bending check and a maximum shear check. I can dial this back down to say 90% of capacity and give myself some breathing room. We've got a lot of different material options here. Let's jump straight to the wood wall studs tab. And this is where I input some of the data for this wall. You can see the top plate, the sill plate, the studs. If I expand this, it brings me into the shape selection menu where I can choose a specific shape. I'm good with two by sixes for now. And we've got columns for the minimum stud spacing and the maximum stud spacing. The program is going to iterate. It's going to look at the axial demand on this wall and choose a stud spacing in between these two numbers that is the most efficient for the given demand. Next, we have the wood wall fasteners tab. And this is where we're going to have all of the shear wall information. So I can pick from a schedule of panels. You can see it's a very extensive schedule for OSB, for plywood, according to a couple of different databases, Canadian databases. And this is just a list of different shear panels with different capacities based on are they one-sided, are they two-sided, what's the thickness, are they over gypsum, what is the nail size, what is the nail spacing. It really all boils down to this shear capacity value in kips per foot. So again, based on my selection, the program is going to narrow this down and find the optimal design. So let's say, for instance, I want to specifically use a 3 8 inch panel, but I don't necessarily care about the nail size and spacing or whether it's one-sided or two-sided. If I hit OK, it's going to be choosing from that panel thickness group, so I don't need to input anything different for the minimum panel and maximum panel thickness. I can switch the double-sided option to optimum, so I can let it pick either way. Have a maximum and minimum nail spacing. I can also choose my hold down cords, again from that shape selection database. Note the nomenclature here, two 2x6s, two that indicates just a double 2x6. The material is going to be the same as the wall material. 
I've also got a database for hold down selections. Again, the same thing here. The program is going to be looking at the demand at the corners of your regions and finding the optimal hold down based on the grouping that you select. So there are a lot of options here available to help you optimize your design. I'm going to want to make some copies, make some new lines in this spreadsheet because I'm going to need presumably different designs for different areas in my building. For example, I might have one set of parameters for the interior walls versus the exterior walls. Maybe I want to do something specific for the first floor as opposed to the second floor. You can make as many groups as you need to in order to efficiently design your wood building. Simply hit enter in this spreadsheet to add new lines. It makes a copy of the line before it, and I can tweak those options to get this where I need it to be. All right, let's draw a few. So my draw walls tool is right here. We can see that it's going to do a wall from the bottom level to the top level, which is the one that I'm currently looking at. Let's choose a material of wood. Douglas fir material set, lots of different options in here for the different materials. Here are those design rules that I just set up. I had the typical one and then the ones that I added. Let's just stick with typical for this example. And I'm going to pay attention to the function of this wall. I want this to be a lateral wall. I want it to be a shear wall. Now that I've got the DXF drawing grid in place, it's just a point and click operation to draw in these walls. Right click to stop the drawing. I can really draw in the walls at whatever length that I choose. It mostly depends on where you want the hold downs to be located because for most design methods, I'm thinking of the segmented design method, the hold downs are going to be located at the ends of the wall and at the corners of regions. So my wall can be as long as I would like it to be, but if I want to break it up into smaller pieces to get hold downs in more locations, I can do so. Forgot one down here. Let's go ahead and get that guy. I'll go back into the same tool and I can switch them to a gravity only wall, say for these little short walls that aren't going to be long enough to really develop any shear force. The color coding here, red versus blue, red is lateral, blue is gravity only. That is true of all of the elements here in Risa Floor. I can double click a wall to bring up the wall panel editor and elevation view here. This is where I can insert openings, doors and windows. I have a grid here that is customizable. I can put in whatever increments that I want to get the specific size of my windows. I'm just sort of approximating it here. We can see that it's also putting headers above these openings. We're going to get the header design for these uh, walls. The regions will be automatically created by the program when I run a solution. They'll be created based on these openings. I've got several different options for design method here. By default, it's using segmented, but we also have perforated and force transfer around opening options available as well. Hit OK. And if I switch back to that full model 3D view, I can see those three windows that I just put into that wall. The next thing that I want to do is insert some columns into this building. Draw column buttons right here. This is a similar tool to the wall design tool, similar options where I can have lateral versus gravity only. I'm also going to be setting up design rules for the columns as well. For today, I'm just going to get them into this model. When you have the DXF file like I do, it's a simple point and click operation to put them at the intersections that you want them to be. I can also use another neat feature here. If I go to the model display options, this blue M in the upper left corner, something in the miscellaneous tab that I can do is I can show another floor. I can show the floor below this one to see my framing below and make sure that I'm putting my column where I want it to be on top of this transfer beam. So I have verified that yes, I have a beam underneath that section of the floor where I want it to be and I know that I'm ready to drop that column and have it be supported by the beam underneath. Useful tool for seeing what's above or below, seeing what's being supported, tracing your load path, um, seeing where walls don't line up, that sort of thing. Drawing in beams is gonna be another simple point and click operation. I'm gonna to wanna to set up member design rules just the same way that I set up wall design rules. We've got things here like maximum and minimum depth, 
We've got deflection criteria that need to be met, all that sort of good stuff. When I'm ready to start drawing, here's the tool. Okay, let's go to the wood category. Note that I'm selecting the material and the shape group, and the program is going to optimize the size of that beam based on the demand and based on the parameters that I set up in the design rules, just like the walls. I want the function of these to be gravity. I'm gonna draw point to point, let's do that. And again, just a simple point and click. We've got some handy features here though that I can draw one line across multiple spans and it's going to divide those beams up across these columns. It makes drawing in this framing super quick. Let's do this. Let's say that I didn't mean to draw in one of these beams. Let's go to say this one up here. Something that I like to do is unselect it, reverse the view with this button over here, and then I can delete selected beams. And that's a really quick way to get rid of a mistake that I've made. Go back into the tool. It saves all the same options that I was just using. And I can finish drawing out this framing. Now that our beams are in place, I can finish this out by using a really handy tool, the Generate Beams Within Bays tool. Go into this, I've got all the same options here. I also wanna talk really quickly about wood products that we have available. We've got databases from different manufacturers, so you can, again, get these optimized designs, but using wood eye joist products. We've got some options here for how to fill in these bays, equal spacing not to exceed, exact, or a number of equal spaces. Let's let the program take care of the spacing for me. I just want not to exceed two feet. I want them to be horizontal in this plan view. Hit apply. And now I just single click inside all of these closed bays. And that's going to fill in all of these beams for me. Let's go back into that same tool, switch the direction to plan vertical for these last couple of areas. And that's it, I'm pretty much framed out. I can do the same thing with typical wood members. Whoops, I forgot to draw in a couple more of those beams. You can see how this uh, really becomes an easy exercise once you get the hang of where these tools are. Fill these out one last time. And just like that, I have got this building pretty much framed out. Last but certainly not least, let's talk about inserting a diaphragm. Go up here to the diaphragm tool. We've got a few different types here, rigid, and for wood, we're probably gonna be interested in either the flexible or the semi-rigid option. With semi-rigid, you get prompted to input the actual material set because this is going to create a network of plates behind the scenes that accurately represent the stiffness of this material, say a three quarter inch plywood, it's going to use the material properties and really be an accurate distribution method for the lateral forces here. I can pick and choose where I want this diaphragm edge to be, but if it's around the entirety of my building, it's very simple. I consider all selected beams and walls for the diaphragm, hit apply, and we see this light blue line appear around the perimeter. Adding in openings is just as easy. Same tool, go to create an opening perimeter, and we do the same thing within this opening that I had framed out. A single click creates an opening that is going to be a physical opening in the diaphragm. It will affect the stiffness and it will not have any loads attributed to it as well. If I go to the diaphragm spreadsheet, we can see the, uh, the tabular version of all of those things. We do also have wood diaphragms available specifically for this type of structure. This is a very similar database as what I was using for the wall panel schedule. So again, I'm gonna be looking at the panel grade. I'm gonna have it choose between a minimum and a maximum thickness, a minimum and a maximum uh, nail spacing. And with that, I'm going to be really getting a comprehensive design for this wood building. From here, we can add area loads, we can customize different things. And once we're ready to run a solution, Risa Floor will do the gravity load combinations. Once I'm happy with that, we will export this model into Risa 3D by way of this director button up here. And that's going to finish out our design with the lateral systems. We'll get the finalized design of all these shear walls, any braced frames that you might have, things of that nature. 
For more information on designing wood buildings in Risa Floor, please visit our website, risa.com.